So in this video we're going to go over how to graph a parametric equation using GeoGebra Classic 5. So in the previous video we looked at a parameterized uh, we looked at the parameterized motion of an object that we projected at an angle of 45 degrees with an initial velocity of 40 feet per second and this was the parameterization that we used in video one to represent the flight of the object after it was projected. So before we jump into how to graph this in GeoGebra Classic 5, the first thing we want to do is uh, determine what the uh, domain is for t. What is the time interval that we should utilize? And what we want to recognize in uh, coming up with the time interval that we should use is that it's going to be controlled by the vertical component of the object's flight. In other words, the object starts on the ground and the flight will be over when it lands on the ground. So we want to know when the height is at zero feet. And the horizontal uh, flight isn't going to impact when the object is on the ground. That's strictly controlled by the y value. So all we do is take our vertical uh, equation describing vertical motion and we set that equal to zero to see when the object is at zero feet. So looking at this, I can factor out a negative four. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. In fact, I'm gonna factor out a negative four times t, because that's a common factor in each of the two terms. And that's gonna leave behind a negative, a positive four, sorry, times t minus a five square root of two times nothing, times one, because we factored the t out. And then what we want to recognize is that we can use the zero product property. Either this needs to be equal to zero or this needs to be equal to zero to get a product equal to zero. So from this one, we see that time equals zero represents a time when the object was on the ground. And that represents the initial launch of the object. And then we can take the other uh, factor, the 4t minus 5 root 2 and set that equal to zero. And if we solve this for t, we get time equals five times the square root of two all over four. So the time interval we're gonna be interested in graphing over is the time interval that starts at the beginning of the flight when the ball is, or object is launched from the ground and ends when the object lands on the ground again, five root two over four seconds after it was projected. So this is the time interval we will be interested in using. So I'm gonna escape from here out to GeoGebra. So what we wanna remember is that the graph and the parametric equations that generate the graph are a plane curve. So in GeoGebra, the key word that you wanna type in, the function that you use is the curve function, C-U-R-V-E. And you can see when I type curve into the input bar down here, it's giving me two prompts. This first one says expression, expression, parameter variable, start value, end value. So this is for a two-dimensional uh, space curve where the first expression is the x position, the second expression is the y position. The parameter value in our case will be t for time, the, uh, the variable name we're using to parameterize the motion. And then the start and end value will be the beginning and end of the time interval of flight. If we were doing a three-dimensional space uh, curve, we would do expression, 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 and this would give us x, y, and z positions, the parameter, the start, and the end value. So when GeoGebra prompts me for curve, expression, expression, I know that I have a two-dimensional space curve, and I'm, I'm not gonna touch my mouse, I'm just gonna hit enter and it will automatically lever or load uh, the function into the input and highlight expression. So I don't wanna to touch my mouse. As long as I just start typing, I can type the x component or the function describing the x motion. And that was x of t equals 20 root 2t. So for the expression, I'm just going to type 20 square root of 2t, and the, for the square root in GeoGebra and most uh, computer algebra systems, it's gonna be squirt, S-Q-R-T, squirt, 20 squirt two, 20 square root of two, times t, my uh, parameter, 
and then I just hit tab. I hit the tab button and it automatically highlights the next expression so I can just type in the y expression which was negative 16 t squared plus 20 square root of 2 so squirt 2 and again I'm not touching my mouse at any point in this process now I just hit tab it highlights parameter value I type T which is the parameter name I'm using I hit tab the start of our interval was at 0 seconds tab the end of our interval was at 5 square root of 2 so squirt 2 divided by 4 seconds and now I'm just going to hit enter which will load the equation from the input bar into the algebra window up here so I can see my parameterized equations and my time interval ah I didn't put the T on there it's like the graph isn't right so the so here my Y my Y uh, parameterization should have been negative 16 T squared plus 20 root 2 times T notice I didn't type the T on the end of there so that's why I'm getting something funky it's treating this as a height instead of a velocity all I need to do to fix this is double click on my equation and it will pull it up into the box and I just go in and I click in there and add my time parameter and hit apply and hit OK and now I've got my graph and then I just need to modify the window so that I can see things well so I'm gonna go move graphics window I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab this tool and then gonna come and hover over the axis until I get the double arrow I'm gonna left click and hold the left click button down and then drag my graph over until I can see the bottom and then I can probably if I want to change by hovering over the vertical axis until I get the double arrow left click and hold I can modify my vertical axis to get the appearance that I want um, GeoGebra by default labels things so you can see here it's given my curve the name A and you can go into options and labeling and turn off the auto labeling you can say hey only label new points or uh, label nothing at all like no new objects and then it won't auto label things uh, if you're if you're going to be a future teacher turning off the auto labeling if you're uh, creating illustrations for things can be really useful because the uh, images will get messy if they're auto labeling so anyways that's how you parameterize then you can always uh, go in and click double click and you can change things so I could say hey instead of going uh, through the entire flight what if I only go through part of the flight 5 divided by 4 and it will draw in just that part of the flight so easy to edit the one thing that's hiding from us on this is that because we have a parameterized equation there is a directionality to the motion the object is moving from left to right along the curve and GeoGebra doesn't put in any arrows that would indicate the direction of motion so you kind of have to think about that on your own we'll go over directionality in the next video when we do how to when we talk about how to hand graph a parameterized curve